You are listening to War of the Stars, a Star Wars podcast presented by Realm of the Mist Entertainment with your host, John Tolley. everyone and welcome to war of the stars a star wars podcast come to you as always from deep within the outer rim far beyond the watchful eyes of the galactic empire my name is john mark tolly and joining me today as always is mr joe cahill joe how are you today i am doing quite well today how about you mark i am doing just fabulatastic and hopefully and everybody also, out there listening is <laughs> yes and also, returning from his secret mission into the Unknown Regions, is Mr. Ray Rumsey. Ray, how are you today? No, I'm very well. Thank you very much. It's good to be back. All right. Well, we're just going to jump right into it. Uh, there was a new little TV series that debuted. I think it's based around this little indie film called Star Wars or something like that. Uh, <laughs> called... I'm, of course, talking about The Mandalorian, what? which uh, I know, right? <laughs> spoilers. Uh, spoilers ahead all over the place. Yes, yes, yes. Um, I uh, fortunately was, um, even though I do not have Disney Plus, I think full, thanks to a uh, old friend of the show by the name of Brian Miller, I was able to watch The Mandalorian and uh, plug for uh Star Wars Canon Podcast. I was on that show uh, this past week on Sunday. I was on his Sunday show, so we were able to talk about The Mandalorian then, and we are back here to talk all about The Mandalorian. So, have you guys had a chance to watch it? Uh, a few times. Yep. A few times, yeah. And yes, I uh, broke down and got it. <laughs> yeah. it, it was more uh, that... because I hadn't seen Captain Marvel or Endgame. Oh, oh well, okay. there you go. <laughs> Um, so we'll just start right off the bat with, uh, Ray, since you were here last week, what did you think of the Mandalorian? Just first of all, we'll just go into basic overall thoughts and then we can go into detail and spoilers afterwards. So yeah, what was your initial thought on the Mandalorian? Uh, so, you know, I went into it highly skeptical, uh, given the, the recent events in movies uh, mm-hmm. the, I felt, I felt that the, uh, first episode was, um, kind of to set the mood, if you will, uh, yeah. kind of fan service. Uh, it almost lost me. And then at the end I was hooked. And so yeah. my overall impression right now is I love it. It's, it's great. Mm-hmm. Uh, Joe, what about you? I... I'm not ready to vote yet. <laughs> fair enough. Fair enough. Dang it, Joe. Fair enough. Fair. Uh, I'm still fair not enough. sure about it. I, uh, I I did watch both episodes straight through. Mm-hmm. Um, there were a few things that I found not necessary. Oh, yeah. Okay. Um, but I'm, I'm, it's still out there. I'll watch some more of it to see what happens. But uh, at the moment, I can't go either way. Okay, that's fair enough. That's fair enough. Um, so, well, let's start. Let's. That's a good jumping off point. You said there were things that you didn't think were necessary. Uh, could you elaborate on that a little bit, maybe? What are What are the things that you saw that you didn't think were necessary? They threw in some silly, silly things that they didn't need to. Uh, okay. I'm like, this is a Mandalorian. This is a highly trained Merc. They showed he's a highly trained Merc. And then he's getting tossed around and making stupid mistakes and, you know, getting outwitted mm-hmm. by Jawas. And I was just kind of like, okay, this is kind of ridiculous at this point. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's not very good at parking that ship in a safe location. Yeah. You know, you don't, you don't park it out in the middle of the desert if you've got Jawas. Right. No, no, no. <laughs> that, that's not your best choice, really. Or ice yeah. walruses. Yeah, that's another yeah. bad choice. Ice, yeah, giant ice, giant killer ice. I, I forget yeah. the name of the monster. I I apologize. <laughs> I don't. I don't know. Although I did, I did legitimately laugh when he was shooting the Jawas and they were just exploding. That oh was... yeah, yeah, that was. <gasps> <laughs> Which I actually read an interesting uh, kind of fan theory on that, 
was that um, part of the reason that they put that in there was specifically to uh, like expound on the part where Vader points directly at Boba Fett and says, and no disintegrations. No disintegrations. Yeah. So yeah. I, I think no, they were was... kind of like giving a little nod to that. Yeah. Yeah, that was... Uh... Um, so, but yeah, yeah, I I can see that. I can see that, you know, and, but yeah, I mean, what about you, Ray? Was there anything about, about it that you were just kind of like, eh? Uh, well, I, w- I wasn't a huge fan that, you know, they made this big deal in the first episode about this, uh, bascule armor. Yeah. And, and how great it, you know, they made it seem like this was going to be the most awesome thing in the world, but he spends more time repairing that than he actually, you yeah. know what I mean? It, that's kind of odd to me. Yeah. Well, I mean, if, and this is one thing we can go into later, but if you watch, uh, the last season of Rebels, the first ep- the, the first few two episodes deal with Mandalore and the Mandalorians and their fight against the Empire. Mm-hmm. And they talk a little bit about the armor and how the armor is passed down from generation to generation, but it's modified to fit whoever is wearing it. So, like, if you have a big hulking guy who's uh, passes it down to, let's say, a daughter. Well, obviously, the daughter's not going to be able to wear the big hulking armor, so they have to constantly refit it to fit, you know, how whatever they're needing to do wherever they're going. So that part was kind of almost true, where it's... And then they add stuff to it. So it starts out as one thing, but then as they grow and get more, in, you know, better at their job then their their armor adapts to to that so mm-hmm. that's one thing i kind of um i thought was kind of interesting and I, i'm hoping they kind of go more into that i do hope they go more into into the actual mandalorian culture right and yeah. that it's not just bounty hunters are us i mean i like getting into the bounty hunter into that that the, the bounty, you know, mentioned the guild and everything like that, but and I like to see more more bounty hunters show up, but I really want to see more from the man uh, about Mandalore itself. You know what's happened in Mandalore since the since you know the fall of the empires and everything like that. You know um, what it's happened with Death Watch, what's happening, you know, all that all that stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's something I'm really interested in saying. I had read a fan theory earlier today that was talking about, um, something that I kind of hope is, is right. Was that the Mandalorian himself, um, was saved as a child by Obi-Wan back Mm. during the Clone Wars. And I was like, oh, that would be really cool to kind of, oh, yeah. Yeah. Where's that theory coming from? What are they basing that on? Because that seems way, way out there. I mean, there's been nothing in the show showing that. Well, yeah, and and that's very, very true. But, I mean, I think they were simply... The impression I got was he was definitely found right there on uh, Mando. um, Yeah. Right after an Imperial attack. Yeah. Yeah, because they mentioned he was a foundling. Right. Yeah. Um, I think that... that's that. I think they were just basing it off of that Obi-Wan, you know, had a lot to do with the Mandalorians during the Clone War. And they were, I mean, they're grasp, grasping at straws, I'm guessing. But, I mean, it would still be cool, in my opinion. Oh, definitely, definitely. Yeah, definitely. But uh... but at the same time, I don't think that everything needs to necessarily connect. Right. And if you, and if you actually look at the timelines, they don't quite match. Clone Wars, mm-hmm. Imperial Invasions, um, Obi Wan would have been in hiding. Now, it, now, if it was, 
because you know we don't know exactly. I'm, we're guessing that just. I mean, obviously, I haven't had a face reveal yet. Um, but just from the actor that's playing the part, and you know the time period, I'm guessing the Mandalore is about somewhere between Luke and Han's age. Maybe older, older than Luke, but not quite as as old old as as Han at this point. So he would have been a young young child during the Clone Wars, and have would have grown up during the imperial imperial reign so um that battle we've seen could have been during the clone wars you know it's not really it's, it doesn't really show what time period that that battle where you see the young Mandal- mandalorian you know running and being taken from his parents and his parents dying or what, whatever what have you mm-hmm. it you can't really tell there's no way of really seeing what time period that is because you don't see any Troops. You just see the blast, the the blasters from the space coming down, and everyone running for their lives. But as far as I could tell, and I'd have to watch it again, I didn't really see any stormtroopers. I didn't see any clone troopers, or any droids for that matter. So that battle could have taken place at any point in time. So this is very true. Very very true. Know. Um, what did you guys think about and? the fact that we haven't seen the face yet. Do you think that's something that should should keep in for the series? Or do you think eventually we should get a quote-unquote face reveal? Or do you like the idea of the the secrecy, being, keeping that secrecy of the Mandalorian, of we never see his face? You can answer that first, Joe. Um, I think it's going to turn out to be, they're going to save it probably as the the cliffhanger for the end of the season. I, uh, I would agree. I could totally see that. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. I don't know. When did that whole thing come about that Mandalorians never took off their armor? Cause you look at, um, Django, he took it off all the time. Yeah. But maybe it's Django of truly Mandalorian. Okay. That's fair. What's that? I said that's fair. Oh. Um, yeah, I mean that was one of the things I heard was that you know Django wasn't considered a true Mandalorian. Um, but I've heard I've heard differing stories on that. Um, yeah, I would think Django was, but they wouldn't expect a clone like Boba. Yeah, Boba was. I know for a fact Boba was not considered a true Mandalorian. Right, because he was, um, and the fact that even though Django was considered a Mandalorian, he was not considered a like a true Mandalorian. I'm making air quotes because he didn't follow the the cultural rules that were set down by by the by the different clans. You know, he. He did things that you know were looked down upon, and were considered to be in bad taste or very unMandalorian like. Um, right. With some of his, you know, the way the way he, you know, carried himself and stuff like that was considered to be very unMandalorian, not very honorable. And I you know um, the Mandalorian culture. You know, it seems to me, at least, what we've seen is. Very based very highly on this this system of honor. Yeah, yeah, you I'd know. agree with that. And weaponry. Um, yeah. <laughs> yes, yes. Never leave your weapon. A Mandalorian. Yeah, Mandalorian is uh, weapon. Weapons are their are their religion. I like that line. Um, I you get a really good feeling for the movie. I mean, for the TV for the show. Pretty much right off the bat, the minute you see the Mandalorian walk in that bar, walk in that cantina, that bar. Yeah. I mean, that just set the tone for me right away. Like, oh, this is the guy who doesn't play around. And that that guy trying to run through the door and then getting cut in half. I'm like, okay, 
I see where this is going now. <laughs> All right. Um, and I was right. It definitely had a very Western feel to it. I mean, did you guys see that? Oh, definitely. Yeah. You know, very. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Clint Eastwood, Spaghetti Western, Man Without a Name. You know, and the fact that you we don't know his name, he's just, in fact, I mean, even more so than that, the fact that we don't know his name, he's just the Mandalorian. Yeah. I wonder if they ever will reveal that. I'm kind of like, I'm, I'm kind of the same way with the face reveal. In a way, I hope they don't. In a way, I hope, I mean, I know they will eventually probably release the face, you know, reveal the face, because when you have... You know, an actor who's as conventionally good looking as the guy they got to play the Mandalorian, you're gonna have to do a face reveal eventually. Yeah, they're gonna want to take um, advantage of that too for the yeah yeah uh, the heartthrob Mandalorian for the ladies to try and draw a, yeah, uh, a wider right. audience. Yeah, <laughs> that's right, that's right. Um, but here's an idea, and I kind of floated this on uh, the show, the, the other show I was on is because of how the show kind of works. And I think it would be it would be very bold and ballsy to do it, but I think it could be an awesome episode to an entire, entire episode of The Mandalorian with absolutely no dialogue. <laughs> Just him going out finding his finding his his asset and bringing it back. Or 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 killing it, whichever one the one may be, but with no no actual dialogue. I think I think it would be ballsy, and there are people who would hate it. But I think it could be an awesome episode. I think they were pretty close to that with the second episode. Yeah, there was very little dialogue in that one. Yeah, but the episodes are so short that I think they could they could probably well, get away with it. Honestly, well, that's the other thing I wanted to talk to you. I wanted to. Uh, talk to you guys about is what did you think about the uh, length of the episodes? I think, do you wish they would have been longer or do you like the fact that we're just getting these short little half hour episodes? I mean, I would uh, like for them to be a little bit longer. I always feel like I'm always left wanting more, but I guess that's kind of their goal, right? Yeah. Yeah. I guess. Yeah. 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 I don't know. I'm personally, I don't know how I, how I feel about it personally um but i mean i noticed when i looked at the timestamp on it and at first one said like 35 you know 40 minutes and the second one was like 30 30 minutes i'm like wow that these are short episodes um what about you joe what did you think about the length of the episodes a little short um uh, especially being a, a, a direct feed. Let's just go for at least a full 30 minutes without any yeah. goofy breaks or anything. Um, they could have tagged the two of those together into a single episode easily. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, The first the, that, those first two episodes definitely could have been a single episode. Um, yeah, that would have been nice. But, you know, when you think about and it, I, if they ever do plan on bringing this to, like, television, television, like cable, they're going to slap mm -hmm. all those commercials in there, and now you got an hour-long show. This is true. This is true. If they ever do. Right. Yeah, that'd be um, a lot of commercials. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. I One thing I like, and I think this would be actually a cool idea if, 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 when they bring it to DVD, is labeling each episode a chapter. And I think it would be really cool is when they bring it to DVD to have it be called Book One of the Mandalorian. So it's Book One, Chapter One, Two, Three, Four, and then the next season will be Book Two, then Book Three, or however many se se however many ep series ep uh, seasons we get of it. I think that would be a really cool. Yeah, I've seen that done cool with idea. a few other shows before, and I mean it is a cool idea. It it definitely yeah. makes it a little bit. I don't know, a little bit different than just seasons and episodes. Well, let's talk about the uh, the little green elephant in the room. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm going to sing it right now. Baby Yoda, do-do-do-do-do-do. Uh, Baby Yoda, do-do-do-do-do. Uh, 
That's a double. Um, I, I mean, I was. I went into it knowing what to expect. Um, I mean, what did you guys think when you first saw saw little green thing there? How useless is that thing for a show? <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to have to go the other direction with, with that and say that is probably right now my sole purpose for watching this show. And I'll go on really? record saying that if anything happens to that little thing, I'm going to lose it. <laughs> I will fly to Disney and chew some people out. Dude, the thing is my age. Calm down. <laughs> <laughs> That's the most it's adorable as as little am, thing but... ever. I mean, well, thank you, but the Yoda was green. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that that's probably my largest gripe, though. And I get it. I know why people do it. But come on. It's not Yoda. It's not the baby Yoda. Well, well, if there's a, if one of the theories is true, it might actually technically be Yoda. Because, and someone actually pointed this out, the guy, one of the guys that, when he, when the Mandalorian gets the, um, the job to get the asset, one of the one of the one of the imperial officers is wearing. He's the one wearing this wearing the white, um, the all white kind of all white. The insignia he's wearing is a cloner insignia. So one of the theories is that this is a clone of Yoda. So it t- might technically actually technically be Yoda, just a a but clone of Yoda. One of the life. Well, that's the thing. I mean, that's the other question as we're going in into this is, um, you know, he was given the given the orders to bring it back alive if possible, but it seems like everyone else was given the orders to kill it on sight. Oh, I see. I felt like he was given the orders to kill it on sight and he couldn't do it. No, no. The Imperial well, officer I've... said, bring the asset back alive, but if you have to, if you have to terminate you have permission to terminate. Okay. I missed that part. I'm going to have to go. Yeah. Back. Yeah. I only watched it once because I didn't find it that well, how would they worthy have of a second Yoda? watch. What's that? How would they have cloned Yoda? I don't know. I mean, well, I mean, the emperor would have had chunks of him. There was well, Yoda no, blood was, all over the Imperial Senate. This, if, if, well, no, because this would have been done. If the Yoda, if the the if the the the, um, the baby Yoda thing, they said was fifty years old, so that would make him exactly almost ten. Ye- it would make him almost exactly the same age as Anakin. So he would have been born or created the same time Anakin was born. So that would have been pre Clone Wars. Right. Now, where do we get the fifty year thing? Fan theory they site, say, or yeah, they did stated. Disney put it out? They no, they say they say in the show uh, that the asset is fifty years old. So because the, the Mandalorian even says something like it's supposed to be fifty years old, and then IG Eleven, which I'll talk about him in a second here, says something to the effect of you know different creatures age differently. Um, yeah, I caught so, that. It just seems like 50 was kind of, even for a Yoda's type species, an awful long time to be an infant. Yeah. I mean, you're not going to be real, even with the Force, I don't think you're going to be that successful on a planet. Yeah. So that means, wait a minute. (laughs) Oh, Joe, ever the cynic. (laughs) Ever the cynic. You you get to be Chow more often than not. (laughs) if, If he's basically, if he's 50 years old and basically a toddler still, that would mean the teenage years would last for over a hundred, over a century. See, I'd have to kill him. <laughs> I have kids. And can you imagine the terrible twos? Ten years uh-huh. of that? Come on. Well, I mean, look at <laughs> look at how Yoda was when he was nine hundred and dealing with Luke. I would almost say he was still a teenager, maybe even still a child. No, nah, yeah. he was old. <laughs> yeah, crank the old man. He was but, just, you know, me. So my biggest without the cynicism. <laughs> yeah. My biggest thing is I always referred to Yoda's species. So I played 
as everybody knows, I do a lot with the tabletop gaming and things like that, and they had a Star Wars tabletop game. And my wife is absolutely enamored with Yoda and wanted to play that race. Well, there's no race for it, so we had to build it. And I decided the the best name to give them, instead of just calling them the Yodas, was to call them Tridactyls. Tridactyls. Because mm. the, that it's a a vertebrate limb with three uh, what is it three toes or three fingers, and that's that's what they well, have. How sci- scientific of you. Well, I figured that's the way to go, right? I mean, Darwin got away with it. Yeah. <laughs> but no, like that, it was just the easiest way to do it, and that's what I I bought. just calling them Yoda. Just because we don't have an official name for him, make something up, man. I don't know. Call him Bob. I don't care. Exactly. Bob. Bob's from accounting. <laughs> <laughs> Just don't call him Greenskins. I guess that's frowned upon. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> um. So, uh, well, one of the one of my favorite scenes i don't want i was just completely just like oh my gosh this is so awesome was the the first scene where you really see the mandalorian of course the uh ig11 yeah and in action that was just so oh and i think they finally finally nailed star wars humor yeah ig88 continuously or ig11 sorry shelly self-destruct now Initiating self destruct. <laughs> yeah, oh. he just keeps popping the core out. Like yes, <laughs> like no. <laughs> that one to me was just oh, and just seeing how awesome. I mean, just how much of a badass he was. Oh yeah. Oh, uh, just all all the time. Just boom, 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 boom. It's like holy cow, this is awesome. Oh, yeah, that was that was like a, a really well executed battle. I think. Yeah. And I, this is the first. And I love. I like the prequels. I mean, yeah, the pre. I love the prequels and the sequels. But this is the first TV show we've had since really since Rogue One that came close to nailing and getting that original trilogy feel to it. This felt like Star Wars to me, I'm- and that's not a knock on. You know, the sequels on Last Jedi or anything like that. I love those movies, but this felt Star Wars to me. Right. I mean, I'm not going to lie. When the little Tridactyl guy's chasing the frogs around, he actually looked like an old, you know, four, five, six style puppet, like trying to yeah. move around. I was like, oh, this seems so classic. Yeah. 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 Everything, even just. Like the feel of the world, everything looked. And from what I've heard, um, the ship that the Mandalorian flies in, most of those scenes are practical effects models mm-hmm. that they I shot the it. old-fashioned way, with having the camera like they did in the original trilogy, with having the the camera do the passovers and stuff like that. So it that's felt not, that's very... not always the old way. There's some of us still prefer that. Yeah. <laughs> Joe's that's over awesome. here. That was cutting edge back in my day. Hey, hey, yeah. hey, hey, hey. That's my days now. <laughs> <laughs> so that, uh, that ship that the Mandalorian that. has, I had a question about that that maybe you guys caught. Is that one of the clone trooper ships? Yes. No, it it's the, like... it's, yeah, it's one of the clone trooper uh, transports. Yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. yeah, it gets mentioned. And, oh, you know pretty old but he and he's that's when he was all that serviceable yeah it uh, also looked like the uh the winnebago from um space balls oh if they'd had a <laughs> we stopped for nothing i'd have been so happy bumper sticker on that <laughs> i would have been rolling that would okay now i like the show would have been what's happened <laughs> yeah <laughs> save save and that for the out. tabletop game <laughs> yes <laughs> we stop for no we break for no one um, yes, with barf the with barf the mog. Yeah. <laughs> now, my favorite part has to be the armor casting. That was oh, pretty cool. Yes. 
um, showing, you know, everything they have to go through to use Beskar, uh, actually bringing up the fact that it's extremely rare now after the Imperials took most of it. Um, yeah. And that's why, you know, he's not in full armor now and has to basically find it and bring it back. Mm -hmm. uh, same yeah. thing. That gets kind of mentioned in Legends, too. Um, that when the uh, Mando finds anybody uh, with Beskar, they immediately go to reclaim it. No yeah. Oh, okay. It yeah, because too bad. It's so shorthanded. They got, they got strip mined. The Empire came in and strip mined them. Right. Yeah, which is what the Empire, Empire does. Well, you know, you know, it's necessary. Well, you you yeah. do what's necessary when fighting a group of, uh, you know, little punk yeah. rebels. Oh, well, here we go. Terrorist <laughs> threat. <laughs> uh -huh. I know, I know. The too imperial bad. dog over here. Too, too bad that armor doesn't stand up to a hairy rhino. Oh. Oh, it looked like it stood up. <laughs> yeah, it, 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 it was him but... because he doesn't have a chest plate yet. That's true. Yeah. He doesn't have a breastplate of it yet. That's fair. all for an egg. That's very fair. Yeah. Suka! <laughs> Suka! <laughs> yeah, if you thought they were going to do something really cool with it, then they eat it. <laughs> they eat it. Yeah, no, yeah, they're, no, no. they're Jawas. I am, I'd be I, surprised if they did anything but eat it. Yeah. I, again, we're talking about the humor. I And the, the Star Wars humor, you know, the scene of him in the Jawa Sandcrawler punched over like that. Just sitting there, and then he hit a bump, and he bumps his head. Uh, <laughs> yeah, they all start laughing at him. Yeah, <laughs> I did like the fact that you we did get a a little more into Jawa culture. Yeah, that was kind of cool. How they kind of how their society kind of works. Not a whole lot, but just enough that we can get like, okay, okay, I kind of see how you know everything is done through trade. Everything is you know yes, they steal and scavenge, but. As long as you have something to trade with them, they'll give you anything you want. As long as it's of what they think of as value. Mm -hmm. um, I like how he was uh, climbing up the, the fortress there. Like, that was kind of cool. You know what that reminded me of? And I'm I'm pretty sure it was not. It was done completely on purpose. Uh, Indiana Jones. Yep. Last Crusade. Oh, yeah. See, I was well, thinking of... Um, right off. Go ahead. What was that? Uh, I was just going to say, it reminded me of when, uh, with uh, Jabba's palace. Yeah. Oh, yeah climbing that. up the side of the big sand speeder yacht, and the guy pops yeah. out the little hatch. Yep. Yeah, yeah, I, I saw that too, yeah. Um, and although I have to admit it was cute when he got to the top. And he whips out his pistol like he's going to win that gunfight. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And they're just looking at him like, waving like, bye. Yeah. They're, they're ion, ion blasters. Like, hey, boom. And he's gone. <laughs> yeah. I'm uh, sorry, Andale. So, That's what I did at the theater with my brothers the very first time we saw the Jawas come on. We were like, Andale, Andale, iba, iba. <laughs> And the entire theater lost it. Well, I definitely will say that the Jawas are probably my second favorite reason for watching that show. Hmm. Another thing, I one thing I noticed, and I don't know if you guys noticed it too, is we're not getting planet names. No, they're not telling us where they're at. Yeah, yeah. we have no idea where they're at. We just know they're somewhere in the Star Wars universe, and the first place was an ice planet, the second place was a desert planet with Jawas. Yep. And we don't know, I mean, and that's the thing, we don't know if Jawas are native to Tatooine or if they're like one of those species that just kind of went around all over. That's always the impression I got of them. Um, that was they were kind of an all over pest almost. Yeah. Right. Uh, yeah. Because <laughs> cause in, even in, in the legend books, they always talk about um, the sand people being the the the, the, the top species. Yeah. From Tatooine. Yeah. 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 And, and then of course, you know, then everybody else came in and just took over. Right. Yeah. Um, what do you guys think about seeing, since we're dealing with the Mandalorians and man, and the Mandos and about seeing other Mandalorians or mentions of other Mandalorians 
or Mandalorian Mandalore's past. Um, like if you're familiar with the Clone Wars and Rebels, um, then Maul was a big part of the Mandalorian history. He actually helped rule man. He actually ruled Mandalore for a while with the, um, Oh, I can't think of the clan, but, um, or like Satine or Sabine Wren characters like this, uh, or even other, other, uh, bounty hunters that have been mentioned. Like, you know, we've already saw IG 11. So that was kind of a nod to IG 88. Boss could show, could show up. Um, Cad Bane, you know, what do you guys think about bringing in other characters that we've heard about or seen into the wider world? Or do you think that should be kept separate and just kind of mentioned? Kind of like how they do with uh, the ghost in Rebels and uh, Syndulla, where it's just that she's just mentioned, but we never see her. You know, we talked about this uh, a couple weeks ago with, you know, the idea of too much fan service. You know, do you think that you can have this, if that could be an issue with this show, too, where they try and push too much in too quickly? Uh, hmm. I, That's what I'm worried about. And yeah. that is all that is one of the feelings I was getting. They tried to shove too much Star Wars into our faces. Yeah. In those first two episodes. Well, and well, here's the problem, though, is when you're dealing with characters like, like, I think you could get away with, like, like the IG-11, like how they did that one. Like, everyone remembers the, the, the robot bounty hunter from Empire Strikes Back. Right. And, and so that was IG-88. So doing that one, you know, that kind of, you know, that was kind of like, okay, that was, that was neat. But, and it makes sense. He's out on a bounty. Right. Um, yeah. The, even the even with even there were other with hunters Bosk, that had come through. With Bosk, you know, yeah. the, the little Trudeau, you know, we saw those, you know, creature you know, those aliens in this in the episode too. But when you're dealing with characters like Cad Bane, who is from the Clone Wars, or Sabine Wren or Satine, who are from Rebels, unless you watch those shows, it will only be those people who watch those shows who would really understand and get who those characters were. Right. Like you just ran some names. I'm like, who? Yeah. <laughs> and like, like, you know, like nerds like me who, who watch those shows be like, Oh, cool. They mentioned it. So unless they actually explain who these characters are in the show, then yeah, just naming them saying like, Oh, Satine said this. And people be like, who's Satine? Mm-hmm. Yeah, who's who's Sabine Wren? You know, who are these people? So right. you got to be very careful when you're bringing in and name drop. You know, name dropping. You know, one or two name drops is something is one thing, but I feel you know. like I feel like it would be the same thing if they actually brought the character somehow, like into yeah. it. That if it was pertinent to the story and it made sense, that'd be one thing. But if they were just bringing them in for the sole purpose of having them there and trying to make their show, like, the ratings better, yeah, uh, that's I wouldn't be okay with that. I think that would be a bit much. And that would yeah. be a gamble. Okay, you might appeal to the people who have seen that show, but then the people who have no idea who they are, and they're obviously important characters from something, you might lose yeah. as many as you gained. Exactly. Now... Now, one thing they could they could do is, and it would be it would be a an Easter egg that could be well hidden, and only only true nerds would get it. Is you could name drop like Star Trek does some sometimes, but have like maybe a, a data pad or something with a list of names in Arabish, and only if you're able to read Arabish, you would notice like the name would be Sabine Wren, Satine, you know, Obi, you know, different names like that. That only if you're able to read those net, you know, read that language, you would get it. Whereas everybody else would be like, "Oh, it's just a list of names in the Star Wars language." Right. That would be a, kind of a cool little Easter egg that would be only 
only if you really, 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 really know Star Wars, you get that reference. Sure. Um, something like that would be kind of neat. But at the same time, though, because... Well, I thought it was a little over the top to put the baby green thing in an egg. <laughs> yeah. I mean, come on. Easter egg, that is oh, just going yes. too far. Oh. What the heck? Oh... <laughs> uh... <laughs> Oh. That's just a little too much. Because <laughs> they were, uh, we're going to have Easter eggs. Yeah, well, obviously now. If that thing had been <laughs> multicolored, I'd have quit watching right then. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's let's talk a little bit about what we think this show means for the Star Wars universe as a whole. And could this show be the chosen one? I mean, it seems to have really brought, you know, with with a few exceptions of people, you know, like, oh, back and forth. This seems to have kind of brought the Star Wars fandom back together in some ways. And do you think this could be the way to kind of start healing that rift between those who don't like the way the, the new, you know, the new saga has gone and those that do, that have? Give it time. <laughs> Give it a couple weeks, a few more episodes, and we'll start seeing the haters. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. As, I'm surprised as as we haven't seen say. them yet. Um, I haven't really gone out looking for them yet, but I, I would bet they're already out there on on certain sites. I'm sure on cer- on certain sites, but as far as I've seen so far, I've really not noticed much. Um, a lot of hate for it, you know, even from the, you know, your typical crowd that you would expect it from, you know, as you said, you know, maybe give it a couple more episodes and people will find things to complain about. Right. And, and you, Um, and I think because it's on a pay-per-view platform. Yeah. That is going to take longer than usual. Oh yeah. I think so too. I you know, so once too. once the pirated versions really start showing up, uh, which will be this week, everybody that pirated yeah. off of the TV and everything, um, then I think we'll start hearing uh, serious, serious complaints. I mean, I'm willing to give anything a chance. If I don't like it, you know, hey, who am I to? Okay, I didn't, I didn't enjoy it, mm-hmm. but go for it. Have fun kind of a thing with everybody else. There's no need to get out and trash it. Yeah. Yeah, I, I agree. I agree. And, and unfortunately, we have a lot of those. That was a great topic a couple of weeks ago. That was. <laughs> that was a great. Um, and I mean, like we said, at that time, you know, it's unfortunately the the, the inner with the Internet. It's just so easy for people to give their opinion, whether, you know, right or wrong or their feelings about something so easily without really considering the ramifications of you know what they're saying but that's not what we're talking about today we're talking trying to talk you know as much positive as we can but at the same time giving our honest opinions um so And what about you, Ray? I mean, do you kind of feel the same way Joe does, that just give it time? Um, I mean, I do feel that we need to give it a little more time. However, I also am hopeful that they are using this as a experiment and a test bed to mm-hmm. make the Obi-Wan show the best that they possibly can. Yeah. Yes. Well, one thing that I said... After the, I felt after, especially after watching the first episode, and first in both both episodes was, it seemed it was fun. I had fun watching it. Yeah. Um, you know, it was it didn't try to take itself too seriously, and as much as I enjoyed Last Jedi, I think sometimes that was one thing that Last Jedi tried to do too much was it took itself way too seriously. Mm-hmm. And you know, Star Wars has never, yes, it tackled some serious topics, and 
you know, things like that. But especially the original trilogy, it never really took itself too seriously. It never forgot that it was a an adventure, a space opera adventure movie. Yeah. And, you know, for all the serious things, scenes that you had, you always had those moments of levity and those moments of of, of, fant- of you know, just pure fantasy. And while we haven't really seen other than the baby green thing using the force, <laughs> we haven't really seen that much of the fantasy, act, you know, other than the fact that they're in space and using blasters, of uh, the fantasy a- aspect of this so far. But we still have that that adventure, f- that fun adventure side to it. I think. Um, yeah. yeah, I think yeah, that's yeah. where they're gonna. Yeah, and and it's, I agree with the theory about uh, they're testing a lot out just so they get Obi Wan right. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. This is definitely the test bed. You know, considering that from what we've heard from um, from what Ewan McGregor said. He's been in talks and behind the scenes working with this for a long time. So this Obi One mo- this Obi One TV show isn't just something that they just you know suddenly came out with like you know a little while ago. No, they've been working on this for a long time, and I think you're right that this is kind of work trying to work out the bugs and you know say first of all seeing if if Star Wars can work on TV, right. You know, that's the big, that's always been the biggest question is, you know, can, can this work on the small screen? And, I you know, so far. I think it's working so far. So far, so far. Um, you know, it, like, like, I think well, just like, like uh, Joe said, Joe said, you know, it, this is one of those things we're going to have to give at least a half a season before we really are able to really see like okay is this really working or not you know but I think they got good people at the helm um you know John Favreau uh, oh well you know I'm, I'm a slight <laughs> fan of John's yeah <laughs> and of course the man that I think should be personally should be in charge of maybe not Lucas films but at least the Star Wars side of Lucas film Dave Filoni uh, directing and giving input in there too. The man who was was the right hand man of George Lucas for years, um, and probably the guy who knows more about George's vision and what George wanted than probably anybody else other than George Lucas himself. Um, so you have those two guys at the helm and working on this show. I think you got all the recipe for a home run. I would oh yeah, agree with that. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, they've yeah. got the team now. Let's just see if they can pull it off. As he's pulled off, you know, like John Favreau, Iron Man. Um, yeah. Uh, well, know, now you mentioned George, which is really yeah. great because that's going to give me a segue into: Did everybody see the comments from Kathleen Kennedy today? I, I have not had a chance to read them yet. Yeah, they are actually very nice. Um, mm-hmm. You need to read them. Uh, okay. She talks a lot about how she just thinks George's disappointment stems from it's hard to let go of your own baby. Mm-hmm. And no matter how good someone else does with it, you're never going to think it's good enough. Yeah. And I, I think personally, I think people give I think Kathleen it, Kennedy a lot more, a lot more grief, and a lot more crap than she deserves. Oh, I think I agreed with that. You know, uh, and you know, I mean, people don't realize Disney that is, they may not like what she's done, but you know, she's the one of the people behind this. Let's put it all together: Disney, yeah. Marvel, uh, you know, Lucasfilm. Let's bring some of the biggest franchises into one giant conglomerate, and we can do what we want. You know, we and, have I mean, money if, if you look at her around. at her history and, you know, just IMBD her how long she's been in the business and what she's been attached to. Oh, you know, people yeah. talk she's about, you know, um, uh, you know, people talk about, you know, with um, not Favre, uh, Filoni 
being, you know, with with George, you know, George for so long. You know, Filoni was only with George for about a couple, you know, maybe a decade or two. <laughs> a decade or two. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah Not, 10, no. 15 years. You know, he <laughs> came in around the same time that the Clone Wars came, started, which would have been about the mid, uh, early 2000s. 2005, I think, was when the first episode of Clone Wars came out, if I'm not mistaken. Um, but Kathleen Kennedy has been around since the beginning. She was with George on like Raiders of the Lost Ark and stuff like that. So she's been with she's been with Lucas literally since almost since the beginning. Right. So, you know, and she's been attached to some of the biggest as executive producer at with some of the biggest movies. I mean, that you could think of, you know, so, you know, she's no, she's no novice at this, to, to, to put it, to put it mildly. <laughs> and the talent pool that she has put together, you know, you have LucasArts, which means everybody has a chance at Disney, uh, the, you know, the Marvel to use uh, Industrial Light and Magic. Oh, yeah. I mean, that's huge. Being able to, yeah. to say we have the best special effects company around in our umbrella. So go talk to them and see if it can be done. Right. You know, instead of talking to another, you know, talented group. Um, and I've seen an I think, like, you know, the movies that have come out as far as uh, scope and technical yeah. have been phenomenal. Well, and speaking, I mean, here's just a, a list of some of the movies that she was producer, executive producer at, in. Schindler's List, Jurassic Park, uh, it, uh, Indian in the Cupboard, Bridges of Madison County, Congo, Twister, uh, Jurassic Park, The Lost World, Six Sense, uh, Jurassic Park 3, AI, Signs, Sea Biscuit, War of the Worlds, Munich, uh, Curious Case of Benjamin Benjamin Button, Crystal Skull, Last Airbender. Oh, that's kind of <laughs> War Horse. <laughs> we'll, we'll gloss that one over. We'll just forget that. Lincoln, uh, Star Wars, Girl on the Train, Rogue. I mean, it goes on and on and on and on and on. So yeah, yeah, she she she's she's done okay for herself. Yeah, just a little. Yeah, just a little. <laughs> and only, only, my, only ex, you know, was producer of some of the biggest blockbuster movies of all time, and some of the most critically acclaimed movies of all time. You know, that's that, that's nothing. No, uh, Schindler's List. What? Who? What? I never heard of that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. All what? I heard Morgan, who? <laughs> you know, in, all in I his heard movies, was a whole bunch of indie films. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, just a few. <laughs> Yeah, I think some of those might have made a little money. I'm not positive. Yeah, maybe one or two Oscars, I think. Oh, yeah, I think you're stretching there. I think it was one. Oh, uh, yeah, 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 you're right. Yeah, yeah. For for the aforementioned, you know, Schindler's List. Um, I don't oh, think the yeah. rest of them were any good at all. Oh, no, no. I hope everybody's picking up the sarcasm in our voices. Yeah. <laughs> And so that Kathleen does not come hunting us down saying, you think my movies were crap, huh? Because <laughs> I really don't need that being in the business. Right. <laughs> that would suck big time. Co coincidentally, yeah. if you'd like to do an interview, send me an email. Yeah. This guy ever asked for financing from you? No. <laughs> I don't care how good the script is. <laughs> oh. Well, I think this is a good a time as any to start wrapping things up right here. Um, so uh, let's just give a quick. Now we'll we'll let you. Um, we'll give you a pass on this one since you said already that you haven't been able to really give a definitive answer one way or the other. But for you, abstain. <laughs> abstain for you, I, Mr. I Ray. Abstain. What grade would you give The Mandalorian so far? Uh, right this exact moment, two episodes in, I'm going to give it 4.5 bacons out of 5 hams. Okay. 
<laughs> no, uh, I, I definitely give it an A. Give it an A, definitely. Okay. Okay. Uh, I give it four Slave Ones out of one Imperial Star Destroyer. <laughs> I, I don't know. Uh, but again, no, I definitely give it an A. Um, yeah, there's some, there's some things that you know they'll need to work on. I think that's why I don't give it an A plus, just a just a straight A. But I think they're definitely on the right track. I can for with that the future. Yeah, I yep. A little more, but that they're closer than anybody's been in a while. Mm-hmm. That's true. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. There's definitely some stuff Which, that they got to figure out, work through, but I'm. I, think they can do it. it it seems like this might work and it definitely improves my hope for kenobi mm-hmm. yes yes and all i have to say about that is he better at one point in that series say hello there right oh i'm sure he will that's that's his catchphrase yeah that would be like the terminator showing up <laughs> i'll be back never happens right you know, yeah <laughs> Yeah, yeah. <laughs> or comes, yeah, the Terminator comes in and just says, I shall return. Right. <laughs> or, uh, the, what, his, what his daughter does, she, she does it on purpose, I will be back. Oh. <laughs> because she knows it just drives him nuts. <laughs> right. <laughs> the grammar police. Oh. No, no, that's how it should have been said, Dad. <laughs> yeah. Teenagers. <sighs> anyway, uh if you liked what you heard, remember um check us out on Yeah, blah 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 blah. Yeah, if if you like what you're hearing right now, even though I'm just completely just blech, <laughs> uh check us out on anchor.fm. Anchor.fm is of course your number one stop for all your podcasting needs. Uh, also check us out on Apple iTunes, Spotify, Stitcher, anywhere fine podcasts are heard. Also YouTube, like and subscribe. If you want to give us financial support for whatever reason we want to complain, uh, you can do that through a few different ways. First, you can uh, support us directly through our Patreon page, uh, Patreon dot com slash realm of the mist entertainment um uh just a one dollar or less donation um or more uh gives you access to our uh after our show our unfiltered unsanctioned uncensored show that we do every once in a while here at realm of the mist um also remember to check out all the other shows on realm of the mist we put out shows Every single, just about every single day, I think. Uh, we got something new coming coming almost all the time here at Realm of the Mist. So check out everything there. If you want to email us with a question, we will be glad to answer it right here on the air and maybe even give you a shout out. You can do that by emailing us at realmofthemistentertainment at gmail.com. Remember, to put in War of the Stars in the subject title so we know who it's for. Uh, if you want to get a hold of me, you can do so several ways. I am on the interwebs at Twitter on at John Mark Tolly one on Facebook at Mark Tolly and on Instagram at John Tolly 3930. Uh, Ray, where can they, where can the fine people find you at? Okay, so Realm of the Mist, I do uh, Chronicles of the Lost Realm, Breaking the Fourth Wall, right here on War of the Stars. I also do some Shattered Dawn on Tuesdays. Um, You can find me on the Facebook under Chronicles of the Lost Realm and Instagram and Twitter, all under the same stuff. And then for the first time ever, you can also contact me at rayrumsey9 at gmail.com. That is my personal email. Please don't spam the crap out of me. Thank you very much. And as far as Ray is concerned, remember, your Imperial credits are worthless here. Oh. (laughs) Then what kind of currency are you rebels going to use? Barter? 
Tortuga! <laughs> uh, I guess I'll jump in. Uh, you can All right. Yeah, Joe, what can Joe they Cahill, you, you can reach me at uh, Joe Cahill, director, producer on Facebook. Uh, Realm of the Mist, you can find me at uh, here at War of the Stars, uh, a couple of others there. Um, you can find us at Steamhouse Entertainment across most social media met- networks. And since he did it, I'm going to go ahead and say, and if you have any questions directly for me, steamhouseentertainment at gmail.com. All one word for Steamhouse Entertainment and only one E between house and entertainment because it just looked funny with two. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, that just about wraps it up here uh, once again. And I'm going to put these two on the spot right here. Um, next week, we will have our first little look a uh, short look into the trial of Darth Vader. We are going to be getting our official list of charges against Lord Vader. So, and I uh, have alleged to, charges. And I will alleged ex- charges yeah, say until I make the ruling as to accept them. <laughs> the arbiter must look at them first. <laughs> yes. Uh, but yes, as you all may know, we are preparing our Trial of Darth Vader special episode. Um, and hopefully have some big surprises in store with that. And more as we get into the month of December. Um, just a lot more excitement, a lot more stuff coming up. So until next time, remember, this isn't just my Star Wars. This isn't just your Star Wars. This is our Star Wars. Until next time, may the Force be with you. From celebrity interviews to Star Wars to things that shouldn't be said but had to be said, to conspiracy theories, or maybe just a night of playing Dungeons & Dragons. Whatever the podcast you're looking for could be found here at Realm of the Mist Entertainment. Make sure you check out all of our shows because there's something for everybody there.